Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Soso here, bringing you guys yet another video here today. Bring you guys a cool little video on how to actually create your own little cool equalizer. Why do I use cool twice? Your own freaking like dope cool equalizer banner design effect kind of thing going on here. I don't know if you guys know what an equalizer is. One of those things that kind of like show music like tones and volume with like, uh, like these bouncing whatever it can be like a water it can be like anything you know what an equalizer if you don't know like look it up it's pretty cool um so yeah this is a pretty cool concept for me just because the overall concept itself it just it just fits with kind of like what i like i love music and i love graphic design like i love music and i love graphic design it's a thing like it, it just it just works this is why it's kind of like really cool to me and like whatever and it, and it honestly came from just my friend and i actually just you know bouncing ideas off each other because it's it, it's dope i don't know it's just freaking cool so if you look at it it's pretty sick also very simple as well however it, it just it's effective it just looks cool i love the way it kind of looks like it's actually moving while it's actually still just a still frame image um also it looks good in really other different colors i have this color concept here literally just use hue and, uh, hue and saturation and i usually don't do that because of course you don't really get the cooler colors if you just do that because you're not going to get the same kind of tones or whatever from the original colors that you picked however it looks really cool in this color as well this color scheme it, I, I love it actually look at that one dude i'm totally down it almost looks like it's playing right now how freaking sick i don't know i'm, I'm down for this I'm still, I'm not sick anymore, I just have like this thing where my voice goes on and off every freaking day, so like, I don't really know, but hopefully it goes away soon, because I'm not feeling it no more, um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing going, of course guys, 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below, so don't forget to leave a like on the video, comment down any to, uh, cool tutorials you want to see me do, also, if you guys are like weird and just don't know what the heck's going on, if you guys don't know my Selfie page, selfie.com slash sysmhq, uh, there's a whole bunch of different products, as low as 3 bucks in there for you guys to purchase and enjoy, including my brush pack that have over uh i think it's what 300 brushes custom stock brushes that you can use for your you know design stuff like that over 600 people has bought that and over 700 people have bought the everything pack the one purchase of 30 dollars you get everything in my store and everything that comes uh like to my store like i upload to my store or whatever gets emailed to you for free despite the price whatever it happens to be and it's really cool and it's just like something if you guys are looking forward to you know getting something for like graph design uh orientated stuff so that's cool let's go ahead and get this thing going and uh yeah let's do this thing all right so let's get this thing going now the hardest most simplest thing to actually do would be these little um equalize we'll just call it like equalizer bars something like that for now uh these little equalizer bars in the background just because i don't know any other way of doing this besides a super tedious yet like also really ridiculously like hard at some points um just method right so what i did by the way was i used the rectangle uh rounded edge tool if you guys want to use the rectangle uh mark tool, like i said you guys could do so however i'm going to be using the rectangle tool like so so i'm going to create a new layer by the way this background color is uh one zero one zero one two and that is the background color for my actual little design here so if you guys want to use the same one because when i use this color over here right over here the hex code that i gave you guys earlier um that will also like look good on this color right here this background black or whatever you want to call it right so i'm gonna go ahead and actually make my my first little rectangle here now i'm gonna go ahead and go for like the pretty compact yet a little bit long i think that's gonna work i can make it maybe a little bit higher just a little bit with Control t right something like that Okay, alright, so here comes the super tedious part. So what you want to do, now if you guys don't know already, uh, if you guys hold alt Y or you're selected on a layer, you can actually make a duplicate just by moving it, just like so, with while also using this tool, by the way, this V on your keyboard, the, like, the directional tool, right? You can do that, that's how you can also duplicate. You can also press Control J while, while on a layer to duplicate, and then you can move it freely as well. Um, you can also press Alt and Shift, so of course holding Alt makes the duplicate, while holding Shift will actually uh, basically move or duplicate the image only in the axis that you actually started with. So the x-axis or the y-axis depending on which way you move your mouse. So moving up and down right now while holding shift, I can no longer move the left and right. So it kind of makes sure that I only move it in the orientation that it stays perfectly symmetrical or whatever with any shape that you're working with. Same thing if I moved it left and right. I can only move left and right now. I can't move up and down. So that's holding alt and shift. If you guys want to, you can also press control J make a duplicate. And then you can just hold shift on its own to go ahead and just move that without moving the orientation as well. So while I'm holding shift, you can see what happens. With holding shift, you can see what happens, right? You get it? All right, cool. Now, to do this, I'm going to go press control J to make a duplicate, right? 
And then also, if you guys really want to do the really silly way, is you can drag it into there. That's boring, in my opinion. Just press Control J. Okay, so hold Shift and move, move it up. I'm gonna move to where it says 0.25. I'm gonna try to get 0.25. There we go. So you can see where it says 0 0.00 centimeters and then 0 0.25 uh, centimeters. That is where I'm looking at. So I'm gonna say that's a pretty good size. Or is it? Do I need to move it a little farther down? I think I need to move it down five. Of course, I get the skip. So this, if this is where this is where it gets tedious. So I th I think that was at six. I'm gonna move it down one. However, I don't know if that's perfect. So if you guys can get it to where you can get maybe at least three or four with using like the 25 point 25, or depending on how much space you want between, like that is a point 25. However, this definitely is not point 25. So the way I actually fix that is just because I know it's tedious. I know you're gonna find the trouble. I know you're gonna I know what's gonna happen to you. I swear it's gonna happen. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just make a nice little rectangle with the rectangle marquee tool, which is M on your keyboard for the shortcut. And that's also located right here. Make a spacing in between this one. Put whatever color it is. Alt backspace, whatever color it is. Doesn't really matter. And then you can just kind of like, you know, put this on 100% uh, or lower opacity. And then just move that alongside with this. And then you can line these up a little easier. It's not incredibly too, it's, it's tedious. However, it's not terrible to the part where you can't actually do it you know what i mean it's like really quick as well it's kind of like just a little bit of an extra step so you can see it lines up really quickly as well if you want to do that like i said it just depends on how much you know you want to put into but as you guys saw i shift click on all of them right here and then i press Control j and then i press Control g to actually group it all so actually you're not doing one by one you're doing like however many groups it gets multiple uh, multiplied the more you do them so like as you can see here i multiplied them so i'm gonna go ahead and move this to where this should be i think it's right here and no, that's not right. So there it goes. Now it's right. So if I do one more, like, or one or two more groups, right? Control J, Control G. Move this up. I'm going to move it up a little further so I can see where it should be. Where I should put this thing here. And then we're going to move this down to make sure it's locked in. And then we're going to see if it's pretty good. So I can, I can kind of get rid of this last one right here. Oops, where is it? It's in here. I can get rid of that last one and then just kind of like group it or space it to where you kind of want to have it. I'm looking at this right here and that's what I'm moving. Oops, I'm not moving everything though. There we go. Let's move everything and I'll say that's pretty good right here. So like I said, this is a pretty tedious thing and like that's like the longest part of the tour. That's why I kind of like didn't speed it up or anything like that. However, this next part I am going to speed up. What I'm basically going to do is I'm going to group everything together and this is going to be my column one. If you guys want to, if it's lagging your computer too much, you can press control E to merge the entire group together. So it's just like one single image and not multiple images. Um, so yeah, while it's grouped, that's your one column. And then you're holding alt and shift and moving it to the right or excuse me, if you want to control J and then hold shift. And then I'm going to say... Uh, that's a pretty good spacing in between. I'm just going to say like, like there. And then I'm going to basically multiply this and going all the way, all the way across and try to like not leave too much space, but also try to keep in mind that you're not trying to get, you know, you don't want to have it look something like this. This is a little too much space. However, it still looks good, but just try to like make sure you guys get it as compact as possible. However, I'm going to speed this part up because it's a little, I want to make sure I don't like waste too much time. So I'm going to speed this up really quickly while you watch and stuff like that. So enjoy. Yeah. All right, as you guys saw, I just duplicated all these different shapes, right? With a different, uh, with all these different groups. I go ahead and at the end of it, make sure that all the groups are all grouped together. And then you can press control E to make it into one single layer. That way it's easier to move and doesn't like lag your computer or whatever. And you just don't have a whole bunch of different groups because you don't really need to. You can just have one shape and this is going to be called our columns. Oh God, how do you, I'm not a speller. I'm just going to go ahead and just put C for columns. Um, I forgot. I know how to spell it. Just trust me. Um, anyway, to go ahead and finish this thing off for these columns, we're going to have to actually make this that color that I said before, which is that other kind of black that we had right here. That looks really good on this black. So it's basically 181819 for this one. Press OK. Press OK again. And then we're set. We're going to make this gray. To we're just going to color code it, right? And uh, so basically comes a little fun part, right? So you're going to make a new layer. Uh, you're going to put our color on the new layer. However, you're going to select your column layer because you're going to want to use the actual magic wand tool. 
um, to select each and every little individual little shape here. This gives you full freedom to actually make whatever kind of like equalizer effect that you want, whether it has to be like incredible big tones that have like really big jumps or whatever, or like a mid range, just like simple kind of like thing going on here. So to basically do that, if you guys don't know already, if you hold shift, you can actually select multiple shapes while using the, uh, the magic wand tool. If you don't, you're just going to end up clicking a whole bunch of different times and then not actually, you know, you don't want to do one by one, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and click and like kind of start it off just like this. and just going to like make sure I try to make like little levels, right? If you mess up, control alt Z is your friend, right? Um, if you end up clicking like on the outside, actually clicking everything, control Z. I, I didn't mean to say control. Oh, no, I meant to say control alt Z for that one, but control Z really quickly to actually go back before you actually click the entire thing, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Oops. And uh, yeah, there's another tedious part. However, it's pretty dope when you've actually finished it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this now and I'll see you guys on the other side. Okay, that works for me. So basically on that new layer that I said before, I'm gonna go ahead and use, if I, either you can do this. You can either have your foreground set for the color that you want, which is your first little square in front and the one in the back is your background color. So if you want to, I wanted to have purple, right? If you want to, if you have your purple set for your foreground color on your new layer, all you have to do is press Alt Backspace and it quick fills it in. Otherwise you can press M your keyboard after you have your rectangle marking tool out, excuse me, after you have your magic wand tool out, if you press M on your keyboard, it gives you the rectangle marking tool. Um, then you can give the option to when you right click, then fill it in with a color and can do it that way as well. Press OK, press OK again, and that fills it in with the color. And then you can either uh, right click, deselect or control D on your keyboard and you're good to go. Now, the next part is basically, of course, doing the actual green tips, which gives you guys kind of like the direction of saying, you know, this is a higher volume or whatever. Um, I could have probably done with like making this go a little higher. So I'm gonna quickly do that. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit higher and then we'll fill that in with purple, just like so. Okay. And then I'm gonna actually quickly drag in my logo. Where is my logo? I need to get my logo. Okay, let's get my logo. Okay, I got my logo. There we go. So. I'm gonna go ahead and find out where the middle is, which is right here. I'm gonna shrink this down really quickly. You can use logo, you can use text, you can use whatever the heck you guys want. I'm gonna be using my logo, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that this right here. That's a pretty good size for the middle. Okay, so basically what you wanna do to actually get the middle thing started, like to have your logo or your text show first, cause I'm gonna do that first before I do all the other the green little tips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold control and click the thumbnail of your text or your logo, whatever you're doing, it'll select the outside shape and that is what you guys want. That way, when you go to your actual column uh, tab, I'm gonna make this purple by the way, cause it'll be cool if I color code it all. What, what did I just click? Oh God, what did I click? What just happened to my computer? Wait, why did I, okay, that was, why did I just like hide all my, okay, whatever. I don't know what the hell's going on with this like Photoshop right now, but you're tripping. All right, so basically, right, you wanna select your column uh, layer and you wanna basically go ahead and just press M on your keyboard, which will give you the option to when you actually are selected on your column to right click uh, layer via copy, not cut, copy. And then this way you don't need your logo anymore. I'm just gonna hide it for now. I'm gonna make that red so you know that's I'm just hiding that. And then I'm gonna make this purple because I want to, because it's purple for these, right? And then this is my logo, gonna, or this is this is my logo. If I just quickly make this purple really quickly for you guys. Like so, I can just make it say logo if I want to, so you know what lo uh, layer that is, right? When you have your purple here set, you're gonna wanna do the green now. So I'm gonna do the green for the logo background first. So I'm gonna do, I'm make a, uh, a layer right below the logo. However, I'm gonna select my columns again, go back to my magic wand tool. And then I'm going to go ahead and select all the different rectangles that actually have color in it. Even if it's, even if it's a little speck of color, I'm going to quickly go ahead and just color all of them in because it'll look good, right? Just like so. It kind of actually gets the general shape of your logo almost in a way. And then basically what you want to do, of course, is right click. Uh, excuse me, you got to be on your magic wand or excuse me, your rectangle marquee tool, which is M your keyboard. Fill, color, press OK. And then, oops, I gotta, I'm not even on my other layer to fill it in. The layer right below that I made before, fill that in with the green, press OK, and then deselect, and then we're good. See, now you have like your, your logo kind of like being shown with the equalizer kind of color. However, it's gonna look a little bit better when you actually put your green tips on your purple. So that's what I'm gonna do right now again. So I'm gonna select my columns, 
Y on my keyboard or W on my keyboard for the actual magic wand tool. And I'm gonna just go ahead and say to myself, where do I kind of want the cap? I kind of want the cap here. So all of the rest of these should be green. Right? Like so. I can like skip some if I want to. I have to all have to be at the same exact height. However, it just depends on what you guys want. I'm gonna go with that. And this is probably gonna have to do that, but then it's gonna look weird here. However, this is okay, this is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and now make a new layer. Right click with the uh, rectangle marquee tool and make them green. Just like so, deselect, and there we go. Now this one right here is gonna look a little weird, so I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this, la this one right there. I'm gonna have to delete both of them. Or, no, we'll delete. The logo green ones i actually don't think i actually had the tips of that the green the last time anyway so i'm going to put that just like so all right cool so now you guys can see like the kind of like the actual design coming in the easiest part is coming up next so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm gonna make a new layer select my same purple that i have and right away i'm gonna make this linear dodge add for the actual layer mode and i'm just gonna click a couple times on the outsides just like so right right on the bottom edge kind of like give it a little nice little glow and that looks pretty good and same thing for like right on top of the actual logo design and then for this next thing i'm going to do i'm going to use a simple little uh color correction so brightness and contrast we're going to go negative with the brightness actually i think we're going to pause it with both of them actually so contrast and brightness go up just like so i'll say around 30 70 is actually pretty good for me and then oh um, we're gonna make another new layer however we're gonna select the green this time so i'm gonna go ahead and quickly select the green for my foreground color or whatever color you're using it really doesn't matter and then i'm gonna go ahead and make sure the layer mode is also linear dodge add load my opacity down about 70 or 60 or so i'm gonna, I'm gonna say 60 is pretty good and then with my opacity here i'm gonna click a couple times around where i think there should be a little bit more green so like there's pretty nice i can make a nice little big splotch here maybe and then like right there or like i'll fix that over there and then that looks pretty good and if i want to i can take my eraser and kind of erase where i kind of don't want too much glow or maybe interference or whatever that's looking pretty good i can put a little green maybe like right here kind of like erase it a little bit and then last but not least put a simple little uh maybe like a white forking color right on the top but then you're gonna lower your opacity down to like pretty low like maybe even 10 or three or whatever just a little bit of light right on the top and then we're going to finalize that one with another brightness and contrast same thing positive positive uh not too much that looks pretty good okay we'll say like 530 okay 530 right there that's pretty good all right, <coughs> excuse me. Um, what I'm gonna do next is pretty much combine everything together. So shift click on everything, including the background, control J to duplicate, control E to merge together, and then we're gonna put a simple little motion blur on. So you're gonna go to blur, gonna go to motion blur, and you're gonna make sure your angle is at 90% and your distance is right enough where you're, you don't do, you don't wanna see like squares. You kinda wanna just see like little spaces in between like this. Like that's pretty good. 28 is pretty good at a, a nice little pixel size. Um, press OK. And then with this, you just want to pretty much take your eraser. And I, I would say nowhere on your logo. Oops, that's my brush. Take your eraser. I would say nowhere around your logo, but just like around different spots. Keep it where like the, a lot of the motion blur should be at the top. But if you want to delete a little bit of the top and leave the bottom having the blur, that's fine. Something like that. And then like that. There we go, that's looking cool. And this kind of like affects, it just kind of gives you that effect that it's actually in motion, right? And it's, it, cause it should look like that because you know, you're kind of like making the things go up. It's, things are just going up, right? So once you have this, you're pretty much all set. If I quickly group this together and see what I have combined with this one over here for my other example, it's pretty much the same exact thing. Actually, I love my, actually I love my other one better for my tutorial, just because it's it, it looks a little cooler in my opinion. I don't know, depends on what the hell you guys want. But if you guys also want to, on your background layer, right, make another new layer. And I, what I did was I used this custom shape tool here. 
and I actually got these default ones. I believe everyone has these. And I think I used, where are they? I think they're right, oh God, where are they? I already have it selected, I just wanna find it for you guys. Where the heck is it? Bro, where is those little freaking thingies? Okay, why can't I find it? Oh God, but you can use like one of these and then pretty much just like, bro, why can't I find it? That's so weird. Okay, I'm over it. Am I over it? I'm not over it. I'm still trying to find it. Bro, screw it. You can just use a, a different brush. You can use just one of my brushes. I don't know why I didn't use one of these in the first place, but if I want to, I can go ahead and just click in the background here. And we'll make another simple little thing like so. I can just kind of like put a nice little blur on it. Gaussian blur. Um, I can do that one or I'm feeling this one. Kind of feeling like something like this. Just, a, just to have a little bit of like difference in the background. So something like that. Put a little Gaussian blur on it. Not a heavy one. Something like that. Put it on overlay or so. Just get, just get a little bit like, you know, kind of flick, uh, flickers in the background or whatever. However, this is pretty much the effect itself. Like, if you guys want to, if you, if you actually made little smaller actual uh, rectangles like this, you can actually put like maybe like your, your Twitter or something like that with like, you know, the text like, you know, spewing out. Like, I, dude, I don't know. I come up with the concept and you guys perfect it and make it your own, make it cool and fun. That's pretty much the whole point of this. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, don't forget to leave a like, guys. Who likes on that video equals a secret down below. And I, I, like I said, I, I love this concept. It's very simple. It's very effective. And I'm probably going to use it. You're probably going to see it be used for my actual YouTube banner just because like, I don't know why, but I freaking like it. And uh, yeah, if you guys like it as well, hope you guys create one pretty cool. Tweet it at me. I'll probably retweet it, all that cool stuff. And as always, guys, freaking stay positive, stay productive, keep smiling, all that good stuff. Yeah, and hopefully by next week, my voice goes back to normal. Till then, you're going to have to deal with it. And I'll talk to you guys later. System HQ out. Peace. Oh, I almost forgot, bro. So if you say to the end of the video, you guys know this little step. Everyone else does not. However, really quickly, if you guys want to, take the actual duplicates of your purple and your green, which are located here. So these two, I'm actually going to just group together. Just these two layers, right? And I want to just make a duplicate of it again. I'll merge it together. I'm going to make it uh, green just so you can see it, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and bring this below the actual original ones, right? These are the original ones. These are the copies. I'm going to move this up, and when I move it up, I'm going to make sure I actually line it up with one of the actual rectangles. So this is lined up with one of the rectangles here, and then what you want to do is you want to lower your opacity on normal still, just like so, and then that way it gets like the, the image of, um, it almost looks like it's, it's bent up there, but now it's going down. You get you kind of get the feel. If you guys know like what an equalizer is, then this will make sense to you, and this will also kind of complete that little equalizer effect. So hopefully you guys stay to the end of the video, because you just figured it out, because I forgot, and now I didn't forget, because you made it to the end of the video, and yeah, I'm done. So I'll talk to you guys later. So, so HQ out. Peace.